The van build you're gonna see now is what we would call here in Cornwall, a proper job. We're getting up to a point where I've got everything that I can done until I finish off the plumbing and the uh, gas. Now, the gas is coming through the floor. We have two gas pipes coming up from underneath and I will go and do a little quick video under there. Now, this is in the cabinet that's gonna hold the furnace and the hot water uh, on demand heater. Now, these guys are both there. There is gas hooked up to, just see in there in the dark, the, uh, the hot water heater and the furnace I don't have. And then also behind me, underneath, we have the oven. Now this guy was all plumbed up and ready to go, hose-wise. Now we do need to put the oven here and then go ahead and test that out. All right, so I'm gonna be painting some undercoat on the part just around the skylight in our bathroom. So this will uh, prep it get it uh, waterproofed, so let's go. Cool. This is the part that I have been looking forward to. In order to proceed and to get to the tiling of the bathroom, we need to check the water as water comes out behind the tiles and once they're put in, there's no turning back. So, I have my tank. It is half full with water now and I've got a really temporary system hooked up to the pump. Now, the reason I have this all temporary is because I haven't wired up the batteries and I don't really want to yet. That's still kind of a little bit raw over on this side of the van. So what we have is our Lucy fuse box. So we've wired our uh, pump straight to this. Now this has just a little 15 amp fuse, which came with the box, so that's great. And wired into where the battery would usually be hooked up to is a positive and negative wire. Now this wire, luckily, for me, came with a car charging kit. So, I just put that straight on. For 12 volt, we have quite a lot of options, but the main option I've got is to run power straight from the battery on the van. Now, all I've done is I've taken uh, the old wire that would go into a car's cigarette charger, chomped it, added really long extension wires, and that is a cigarette lighter 12 volt um, power socket. So, we will put that into the front, Right up there, and that will instantly kick on the pump. All right, so we have this plugged in. This is all ready to go. There is already water in our water system, so we are just checking to make sure there are no leaks. So far, so good because nothing is spraying out anywhere. So we know that if there are any leaks, they're only going to be tiny. Though this part is the most important to me right now because as we cover this and then build on top of it to put tiles on. These parts will disappear. So we're going to check these joins, uh, these elbows to make sure they're all good. Everything inside of these drop elbows, make sure they're all good. But at the moment, the system is filled with water. So the pump is not actually going. Now I can show you that it is going. And as I hold this guy up, I can pump water out. <laughs> And that's the sound of the pump filling everything back up. So we have down in there in the dark zone under the sink, no leaks. This is all groovy in here with the water heater. Again, no heat, leaks, amazing. And then around where the pump is, no leaks. Top of the water tank, no leaks. And I'll just go quickly check down the back. But most importantly, if I don't trip over all the wires, is these shower guys. Now I can see just a drop here and here, which is okay because they are coming off. But otherwise, nothing else is coming out. So I'm going to put my bucket back here just to catch these couple of dribbles that are coming out of where the taped brass caps are. Okay, so we have put in a remote fill kit for the gas tank. So at the back of the van, I've put this little hatch. 
I say hatch, there's no actual cover for it. Now this is just a solid steel port and we have the ability to fire gas in and that is the gas bleed. So just like with a water tank, um, when you put something into the tank uh, or try and equalize the tank, it has to have the ability to do so. So that is why there is a bleed. Now this tank kit connects in to our tank, which is this kind of ugly beast wrapped in insulation, which just sits under the van just behind our rear axle. Underneath the van we have, this is the back of the remote fill kit, so this is our bleed hose, there's our gas fill in hose, and it just kind of wraps up and under, ties in such a way that it's out of the way, and that runs into these top two points. Now we have our first gas hose, it's just in the middle here, and it comes up and leads to this junction. So this junction is basically a bunch of branch connectors which allows the gas to feed in through here and then uh, go off into different directions. So we have our first point here which is our furnace. Second point here, which is our on-demand water heater, and the third point, which is the gas uh, oven. That leads, comes up and over, and then fires up into the base. We are finally getting ready to put all of the, um, the shower room together. Now, I have drilled my hole for my outlet, and that drops down uh, nice and close to the fuel tank, so uh, I've managed to put it in a way where I just have enough space, um, but we're pretty tight there. Now I've started up with what is going to be the framing, and inside of these uh, framing bays we are going to have polystyrene insulation, and then we're going to put our um, backboard, tile backboard on top of that. Um, we have our pipes sticking out. Pay no attention to these yucky holes. I uh, <laughs> ended up having a bit of a nightmare trying to get a screw into the other side and, and not kinking my pipes, but we worked that out. Uh, we have our vent outlet um, for our nature's head toilet. This will be the 12 volt power. That will go in and help that out. And now we have our wall. So our wall is framed up here. And basically the plywood is doing most of the work, but together um, with these timber pieces as well as our backerboard. This will be a super solid sandwich. Kind of like having plywood beams um, but making our shower walls. So our shower just drops over this lower plate. This plate gives it support so if you ever stood on it it's not going to break. And then the shower tray itself has a little bit of a cutout. So we've had to do some work on this shower tray <clears throat> and what I ended up doing was cutting the lip, flipping it gluing it back in place and when we put it in we will silicon around these joints. Then we're going to have silicon on the back of board as well as a seal from the tile. So we'll have three or four layers of super seal making sure none of that leaks. Alright so we have our shower tray in now. We have got our uh, dropper which is the, uh, the drain that's going down through the floor uh, to the outside and the underneath of the van. And we have a timber perimeter just to really hold this bad boy in nice and snug. So this is all kind of screwed down, make sure that none of the edges can fly up, nothing can move. So it's all kind of snugly in there. Alrighty, all done with the framing and the polystyrene insulation. Uh, next stage for me is to put on the back board. So Khan is installing the back boards in the shower. As you can see, shower tray's already in. And once we get the back boards on, we can start with uh, waterproofing it. So in here, we have almost finished a shower. We have just put on the foam back board. And um, I've just also put a polyurethane sealant uh, everywhere I can. As you can see, I've covered all the screws and the washers in here. Okay, so now that we've got the backer boards on, 
and our seam tape on, we're ready for the waterproofing membrane. So I'm gonna paint that on and let it sit for about an hour and then do a second coat. Um, that'll be the first layer before we put the mortar on to actually lay our tile. All right, we have another back of board. This one is going behind the stove and the countertop that's above the fridge. Uh, this will be a nice space for the tile that we'll eventually put there. So Khan's finishing off the other side. So we'll also have some tile next to the sink, which is in this empty space. This side's getting waterproofed. Yeah, so we're gonna waterproof this the same way we have just done to the shower. Look at that cool looking purpley shower right now. So today we're working on the sliding door. We've just put in some insulation. So this is kind of soft, squishy insulation. It'll help fit into the corners little crevices of the door so now that that's all covered up we are working on getting our plywood cut this is the door panel that will soon be going on so i've just been sanding it down it's this kind of nice tongue and groove look okay we're getting very close actually we're doing it right now we're putting in the sink today Right, so we are on to tiling, which is very exciting. Uh, we chose to tile at home. You might be able to tell we're not at the workshop at the moment because we can't drive the van for a couple days after we tile. So we're just gonna do as much as we can and leave the van here until it's really solid. You can see behind me, callan has got half of the back wall almost done. It's looking really, really good. Alright, so today is a grounding day. So I've finished one full wall and half of the back wall uh, and I'm gonna work on just getting it all done today. Um, we've got to leave it for another 24 hours and make sure everything dries before we can drive back to the workshop. Uh, and it's pouring down rain today, so it's kind of a good inside job to do. So uh, another couple walls to go and we'll be done. Get out, our shower is done. Well, mostly done. The grouting is done. Still need to put our faucet in. And today my project is to paint the ceiling. So we still just have the raw timber up there. So I'm gonna put a couple layers of primer and then our final coat of paint that will make it pretty much ready for the door to go in. So we've got a Nautilus shower door that will fit in this space and close it off. So our windows are ready to go in today. We have relatively uh, a relatively dry scenario for us to get this sussed. Now I've marked out my openings. Uh, the openings are 1308 by 600 um, and we've double checked them against the windows. So we've marked them out inside our interior trim. We've also given them a two inch radius up in the corners up in here. All right, we're installing window number one, back window. Song is gone, I'm latching on. We managed to get our windows in yesterday, which was nice because it's the one uh, good day that we get this week, weather-wise. Um, so now the next stage for me is to try and uh, dress up all of this stuff. So I have essentially the wraparound detail that I'm going to put around the windows. And my goal is to hide all of the white all of the existing van. I basically want to make that completely disappear. Um, so to do that, I'm going to need to put a column here in the corner, um, one in the middle and one behind me with a teeny little shelf for a cup of coffee. All right, so behind me, we now have our wrapped around windows. Uh, I am almost complete on them. I just need to put in some little corner details uh, and 
and then we're all finished. So kind of important things we have are the back area of our kitchen. Now I've made this with a little bit of an upstand so that we have um, uh, an area to put some tiles along for a bit of a splashback. I know we have a, a bit of a weaker area where there's a window and a space behind. Now I need that space to be there constantly because we have the opening function of the windows themselves. And it would be less fun if you just couldn't open it. So right now there's still enough room for you to put your hand in, open and close the windows just fine. So what I have here, if I can bring it down. Now I wonder if we can see, but inside each of these windows is this bar. You can see it a bit better here. This is just a little strip of one eighth of an inch steel and I've put that around all of the windows in all of the directions. So what that's going to do is give us our perimeter where we're going to fix our uh, curtains at night. So they're going to have magnets in them and what I've done is I've kept that off the window. I've, uh, I've tried curtains before where they press right up against the window. I wasn't the biggest fan in the end uh, because of condensation and the ability for them to get like a little bit of moisture on them. So that's cool. That is also going to be the case on these two bad boys uh, when we put the panels back up. At the moment they are just getting painted and prepped but they're all good to go otherwise. Uh, so we're going to insulate those and then put the panels on. That'll be great. But otherwise that's our progress for now. So windows in this kind of back wall section all built and prepped up. We're going to put tongue and groove on these raw bits, like a little bit in the middle. Uh, so if you remember that had a bunch of our wires and conduits running through, so that's a nice kind of good um, finish to that. And Megan has made our squishy panel, which goes down here on the edge of the bed, so that's super nice as well. So as we have a little bit of sunshine, and now these panels have been cut and uh, prepped for the back doors. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take out these panels up here. And what that's going to allow me to do is get some uh, insulation in the top and so already at the bottom we can get stuff in here just fine. Uh, so we're going to have insulation at the bottom around this is about where our heads are while we're sleeping. We're going to have insulating curtains, amazing, keeps out the cold and then we'll get some more insulation up there as well. Easy enough, all we've done is we've just jigsawed out these uh, top panels and now they're nicely hidden um, behind our uh, timber panels once they go back on up top but it gives us just a nice area to put some more insulation. So we're about to cover these with their door panels so just before all this went down we took the opportunity to just really kind of cover everything make sure anything that was exposed and scratched before is now being cleaned and tidied up. Uh, Less clean in here, you can see this is all going inside the door, but nicely covered and painted. And then we've filled in any cavities that we have access to with insulation. What's today? December 27th? Yeah, so we're three months in. Um, so we're on day, what, 50 straight of building? Yeah, 50 days, no rest days in between. Oh. That's been um, highly entertaining. Uh, bunch of cold, bunch of rain, bunch of sickness. Yeah. But we powered through. Behind us, we have kind of, we're putting on the finishing layers now, which is really nice and really good for progress. Um, so we have tongue and groove. You guys can just see we have tongue and groove on the underside of our cabinetry and pretty much anywhere where there's raw plywood that's left. Um, what that does is it really changes the space from being a uh, raw kind of workplace into a really nice uh, homey feel. Okay, so a little update. I've been busy painting. So painting the bed area, basically getting all the cupboards ready. Um, most areas have at least a couple coats of primer and a top coat on, so varnishing will be next. Um, also, I've been working on curtains. So we really wanted to get insulated curtains that would work 
both as blackout curtains, but then insulation as well, because we're gonna lose a lot of heat out of these windows. So I've made these, which are very handy because they connect with magnets. So these are still unfinished, but we essentially just use these little uh, rectangular bar magnets that fit into these steel bars along the window frames. So I made one for each window. We also have a big one that fits at the front and that is basically blocking off where the front seats are to the back of the van. So I'm gonna finish up these ones. They're amazing already, super happy with them. Um, connect straight in and just require a little bit of fiddling to get them in. But yeah, they're looking good. Go on for each of our new windows as well. Also give you a look at the painting job we've done. The last of the build from the timberwork side of things for me is the cabinetry front for uh, the kitchen, basically the lower part. Then I'm gonna build the doors for the open and closing um, cupboards up top. And also then the drawers. So these guys are kind of the fronts of our cabinetry. So still a decent size. Um, and I'm just putting together the last one now. Uh, just pre-drilling it with my Craig jig. And uh, yeah, going from there. So this right here is a, uh, a stack of unmade drawers. Um, that's basically my plan for this morning and this afternoon, is to kind of pre-drill all the holes, get them all ready, check them all up, and build them. At that point, then I can pass them over to Megan, who can uh, paint them all for us before we check them in. This morning's goal is to put on the handles for my drawers. So here are my drawers that we've basically put together. They're ready to go. And all these handles are gonna go up here like so, but inside of the plywood. So in order to do that, I have to route all these out. And uh, using a router is a bit crazy if you're trying to freehand it. So the best way to do it is to put it and make it some sort of jig. So that is what I've done over here. So just as a, uh, a drawer is a nice base, I've clamped this other drawer, which is the one I'm about to use to my table. So we can't move anywhere. And I've created this kind of picture frame. Um, and then with this and this kind of grid that we all line up, the router can move around within here and it will take out an area of plywood just enough for this. I'm painting these drawers today. Just spent the last couple days sanding them down and filling in all the holes. These are where the inlaid drawer poles will be, so we're leaving those out until everything's painted. So it'll probably take me at least a day to get these guys painted and then we still have to fit on the drawer slides. So it'll be a couple more days, but it's kind of nice to see them made and they look amazing. Right, oh, I am super stoked to have finally sussed out the furnace. Uh, turned out that the furnace actually needed two um, exhaust points rather than one. So unfortunately, uh, I had to change up the design a little bit. Originally, we were just going to have this one larger vent coming out of the front of our cabinetry. Super nice and straightforward. Everything just came straight from the outside, straight inside, inside good air, outside bad air. Um, and then as it turned out, the uh, instruction manual was wrong and you had to have two. So what we did is we installed a second vent and uh, managed to get enough pieces to work us out just. So uh, as we had before, we had pretty much our finished up deal with the hot water heater. So these guys still have not been uh, wired in yet. Um, and that's just because we haven't needed to just yet, so that's fine. Um, both of these guys, the furnace and the hot water heater have both our uh, DC power 12 volts just going in, matching their red and black 
wires that they have on the units and also these two blues are the positive and negative that will go to our thermostat. So I'm going to extend these bad boys and send them out the side here so that from the couch and the bed we can control the hot water.